Goss as well can be a major issue in corn, but Darren, I'm gonna solve this real quickly. Just plant corn that has good tolerance. <laughs> that is not a solution. <laughs> yeah, that does help. Well, wait, that, does that, help. that is the solution. I mean, that's one of the best solutions that we've got. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree with you there. You definitely want to start there. If I, I want to plant the hybrid that can handle it a little bit, right. but it's still not going to stop it. There's no resistant hybrids at this point right. that I'm right. aware of right. that, you know, gosses just can't possibly infect. So we've got to look at a number of different things. The other one that's really big, Brian, is crop rotation. Yeah. Wherever we see continuous corn, yeah, that's but where it gets a lot it's, tougher it's all, to stop gosses. It's always that way. If I've got a problem in soybeans, well, don't plant soybeans. You're just telling me if i got gosses as well, if i got a problem what? in corn, don't plant corn. I'm not saying well, you obviously. can't plant ever. Just... <laughs> I know. But, I, I mean, this is, is really frustrating because, like, even on our own farm, I want to plant some continuous corn. And we keep getting a little bit of gosses wilt out there, even on the hybrids that supposedly are the very best for gosses wilt. So what do you do then? And that's where I get to, hey, maybe you have to do some tillage. Now, I don't want to do tillage, and that gets to be our problem. I'm trying to go out and strip till in our corn, for example, in continuous corn, and it works great. We're building the soil. We reduce erosion. All these things are awesome, except for the fact that we're still not completely preventing goss as well. All right, let me give you an alternative. If you're in those situations where you say, man, I just don't want to do tillage, but I've got a gosses issue, and I want to try and eliminate some of that residue. One thing that we're seeing some farmers do with a little bit of success is going no-till but then bailing up a good portion of the residue. Not everything, but say yeah, you but take still, half or a little better of the residue still, off there, all of a sudden that changes yeah. the situation quite a bit. Yeah, uh, I don't know if I'd say Chopping quite a bit. Chopping corn that, heads that as well, Brian, it breaks yeah. things down a little bit quicker. It does, but better. still that residue is going to be there and that goss's wilt is going to be there. So this is the whole thing. We can talk about as agronomists, yep, you can do this and you can do that and you can do everything else, but let's face it, if you're planting continuous corn, you've got big time risk for goss's wilt and we want you to talk to your seed company. This is the reason why we're talking about this today. You're probably thinking about order, well, your seed dealer is thinking about you ordering seed already right now, okay? And he's gonna come to you and say, hey, how'd you like to put, place your name on this new variety or whatever else? Well, make sure if you're in continuous corn, you're talking to him about goss as well. It's a bacterial disease. You can't stop it with a fungicide. That's the real problem. So people talk about, well, how about a bactericide? Aren't there bactericides out there like prosidic, for example? Well, a bactericide may help you a little bit. We just haven't seen real good results out of that or consistent results, let me put it that way. So it's certainly possible that at some point we'll find a bactericide, but right now, uh, that's not our standard recommendation as agronomists. All right, the other thing that we hear a lot of talk about is copper and copper sulfate. And looking at soil tests from across the country, we've got so many guys, a huge percentage of guys, that really need some copper in different parts of different fields. So if you're going to be applying copper, this might be your shot to do it. You say, all right, I'm gonna do it in corn, I'm gonna do it foliar, that way I can kind of get that copper fighting off some of the bacterial type disease and I can get that nutrient that my crop needs over time. Uh, so maybe something you consider on your farm. All right, so once again, if you're concerned about gosses wilt on your farm, and by the way, make sure you're out scouting pretty late in the season. If gosses wilt shows up early, it really does a lot of yield damage, but even if it shows up late, it still can do some yield damage. So if you're seeing it out in your ground, make sure the first thing you do is talk to your seed dealer that, hey, I've gotta have something that's got real good tolerance. Other than that, we would tell you crop rotation, doing some tillage, using uh, you know maybe some copper, uh, maybe some copper even foliar or something like that. That's very possible, but it, it, we just don't have a perfect solution for you, unfortunately, with Goss's wilt. Well, one thing we do have a solution for is our weed of the week. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed coming up next.